Hello everyone, welcome to the OM Genomics Show. I'm your host, Maria Natastad, and today we're gonna learn about how to edit files from the command line. So if you're in bioinformatics, you might find yourself often SSHing into a server and you need to be able to edit a script or something in there, maybe just drop a few notes or copy paste some things or something. And it seems like it should be simple to open a text editor and use it. But if you've only been using text editors from your own laptop, like your local computer, and it has, you know, a GUI like menus and stuff to help you find all the functionality you need, uh, then this might be really confusing. So like VS Code is a solid choice for your main text editor. But when you're SSHing into a virtual machine or on the cloud or something, uh, you'll need to use whatever you have available on that server. And usually this means either the tool nano or the tool vim. This is a common problem for us in bioinformatics where most of our tools are run from the command line and we might be writing scripts to orchestrate jobs across the university cluster or the cloud. Um, if you're looking around YouTube for videos about Vim, you can find some really great ones. But one of the things that they talk about is saying how Vim is better than VS Code because you can keep your hands on the keyboard and you can be like this, you know, master programmer or something. Uh, but honestly, keeping your hands on the keyboard is kind of not that important because I don't think it's my physical speed at writing code that's the bottleneck in my work. And even if it was, you can still totally keep your hands on the keyboard the whole time while using VS Code. So I use VS Code most of the time for most of my coding, and that's what I would probably recommend to most people. But it's still nice to be able to edit files straight from the command line where I spend most of my time already when I'm doing smaller edits, not writing like a whole script full of lots of complicated code, but when I'm doing small orchestration things, uh, especially when the alternative is editing something in VS Code, and then you have to SCP, like when you're copying over an SSH type connection, then doing that over and over again to change your script a little bit and then move it so you can try to run it, that's going to be really annoying. So if you're writing a little script that you're immediately going to run, on your remote server or your VM or something, you probably want to be able to edit it with a tool like Vim. When I was new to the command line, I first started using Nano because it was the first editor I found and also because it seemed less scary than something like Vim or VI because the basic command keys are listed on the screen in Nano, like this. So it's pretty easy for me to, for instance, control X to get out of it. But Vim is much more powerful than a tool like Nano. And it's good to get used to Vim because some tools like Git will also drop you into Vim without giving you a choice in the matter. This happens, for instance, when you do git commit and need to write the commit message. So I'm going to show you a few basics and then you can write yourself a post-it note with a few Vim commands that you can tape to your monitor if needed until you get used to it. So now you have your cheat sheet and now it's just as easy to use as Nano. So you can always stop using Nano and simply get used to Vim, which is probably a good idea. So here I'm going to show you the basics that I personally use all the time um, in Vim. So let's open it up. And they have a few instructions here, but one thing that they don't show is that really the number one thing you're probably going to do most of the time is hit the character I. And this goes into insert mode. So now I can put in a lot more I's. And now I'm just typing, right? So then you can type whatever you want, like hello. And when you're done typing something, you and you want to do something other than type straight into the document, you can hit escape, which gets you out of that insert mode. Now, to access most of the commands, you put colon. And here you can say W, which means write out your edits to the file. There's no file name. So if you want to put a file name, you can put it right here. So I'm going to do this. This is test one. And now we've written a file called test one. 
And to get out of them again, I do again colon, and then I can do Q. And if you ever don't want to save your changes, you can add an exclamation point to that. But since I already saved my changes, I can just do Q, and now I'm out. So if I list the files that are now here, I can see we have a test one. Now I can go and edit it again and so on. And let me go I, and I'm gonna just write something and escape. And this time I'm gonna not save my changes. So I'm gonna do Q exclamation point. And now we can see that the changes have not been saved. So excellent. So these are the kind of the minimum necessary things that you need. Another thing I can show you is if you do something wrong or weird that you don't want to keep, you have to first hit escape to get out of the insert mode. And now if you push the letter U, that undoes the change that we just made. And I can do control R to redo it. So U to undo and control R to redo. So those are also good to remember. Now I'm going to save and quit. So that's colon W Q enter. Very nice. And so these are the basic commands that we need in order to get started with Vim. Now, if you sometimes can do all sorts of weird things, like for instance, get into this kind of mode where you're like, oh, I can't type and it's kind of weird. Like, what am I doing? What are all these? Just keep hitting escape until you're out of it. And if all else fails, um, you can keep doing U and control R to get back the state that you want it to be in. And if you are still unhappy that you're in a weird mode like this one, you can say colon Q or like colon right quit if the final state you're in is okay and you want to save the changes that you did make before getting into the weird mode. Or if everything you've done since you opened up the file was a mistake, then you can of course do a Q exclamation point. It won't be in that weird mode once you get back in. So that's a good way to make it okay if you're just like, what is it saying? <laughs> and I got into that weird mode by just pressing Q a few times, uh, which turns out it starts recording something, kind of like a macro. And it's uh, something you can Google like how to get out of, but that was one of the weird modes that happened to me a lot when I was starting out because I was just like used to the less program, which in less, the way that you get out is by using Q. And so I would like try to get out of it by just pushing Q a bunch of times. Uh, but in Vim, you have to get out of it by using colon and then Q. So there you go. Okay, so that's how to get out of trouble, how to undo and exit and things like that. Um, now, a few favorite things I want to show you. I'll open up a test three document here. And I usually go into insert mode right away. Just press I because Usually that's what I want to do in a text editor is I want to write something. So I'll type a few things that we can use. One, two, three, four, five, for instance. And I'm gonna do a few of these. Just a few things that we can play with as we are looking at editing this. Okay, so one thing I can do is I can use DD to delete a line. I'm gonna undo that with U. I can also delete one word. So DW deletes a word. And I can use something like D two 
W to delete two words. I'm going to undo those. I'll redo that one with Control R. Nice. So you can also say, oh, I want to delete three lines. So that's D, three, D. And again, I can undo that with U. Now, if I want to say, have several more of these lines, I could, for instance, do DD on this line and then use P to paste it. And I'm gonna, so it's gonna get pasted on the line right below where you're at. So if I go P here, I get the line back, but now I can push P as many times as I want to basically just get tons of those. And now is a good time to show you again how to delete many lines. So if I want to delete like the, let's say 12 lines, I can do D 12 D. So D is the shortcut for deleting a line. And now I just did DD again. All right. So one of my other favorite things that I want to show you uh, that can save you some time is to find and replace. So the way you do this is you again start a command that's more complex with a colon. I'm just going to show you the full form of it first. We do command percentage s as in like substitute i think and then you put whatever you whatever the old thing is here i'll put a dash and then you put whatever you want to replace it with and i'm gonna do an asterisk and then you can do g c and if i execute that it's going to run through each of the instances I have of dashes and ask me for each one whether I want to replace it with an asterisk. So I'm going to hit return and it highlights the first one and says, do you want to replace it? And I say Y for yes. And then I can basically keep saying yes. Now, this might not be the way you want to do it all the time. So I'm going to hit escape when I'm happy and done with that. And I'm going to say, OK, let me do another variation on this. So I'm going to put in colon. And now you can actually use the arrow keys just up uh, to see the previous commands that you had. You can loop through them just like you do on the command line. So this is super useful, especially when I've made a complex substitution command like this. So if I remove the C, then it's not going to ask me each time. So I think of C as curate. I'm just going to let it execute. And now it does it all at once. OK, I'm going to undo that with U a couple of times until I get back to where we were. I'm going to do colon and then up. And I'm going to mess with the first command now. Uh, let me take away the C again. And I'm going to try doing this without the percent sign. And then I'll show you what it does now. So it only works on the line that it is on. So the percent sign just makes it work across the whole file, which to me is pretty much always what I want. I always want it to be across the whole file. Uh, but if you ever want it to be just on one line, you just remove the percent sign. So I'm doing that again. So I get back to what I had wanted. And so this is what we had. Now, the other thing is that the G makes it global, which means that it doesn't just find the first one to replace. So if I do, if I remove the G, you can see what happens. It replaces the first instance it finds of it on each line. <laughs> uh, let me undo that again, colon, up. And I can do this also just on the one line I'm on. If I remove the percent sign, it'll just find the first instance of it. And oh, I'm on the wrong line. Uh, let me run that again, colon, up. And yeah, so this is like the super basic lowest form where you just have colon to get into this mode. S, the old thing you're replacing, and the new thing you're replacing it with, and you just execute that, and it's only gonna replace the very first instance it finds. So I could also say, 
if I want to replace across the whole file, every time I find a T, I want to replace it with a capital T. And I want to do this multiple times, not just the first T that it finds. And I can decide whether I want to curate them or not. This time, let's curate again. And I can say yes and yes. And so this is how you can do a find and replace across the whole file very easily. This does support regex, which can actually be a downfall when you're using it. For instance, if I want to replace all the periods with commas, then I actually end up replacing every character with a comma. This is what the undo key is for. So the reason this happens is that in regex, the period character represents every character. Now, if you actually just want to replace the period, you have to escape it, which you use the, I think this is the forward slash, <laughs> but it'll tell us the pattern is not found, right? So I'm going to add a few periods in a few different random places. Um, let me show you this though. So here it highlights all the characters. This gets interpreted as regex. When I put the forward slash in front, it'll actually only take the, this means like, no, I mean an actual period is what I want to replace. And I want to replace those with commas and ta-da, done. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna save this, write and quit. And then I'll actually show you what my, I think I have a vimrc file, so that would be here. And you can edit this. And so these are the things that I have. So this enables syntax highlighting, and these make it so that when I am doing a find and replace, like doing this kind of substitution, it'll highlight the matches. As you can see, this makes it much less scary when I can see what I am going to replace before I even do it. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use Vim with some basic things. So if you want to go further and learn more about Vim, one of the things I can recommend is that you check out VimTutor, uh, which is the official tutorial and it's in text form, which is pretty fun. Uh, so then they actually have exercises that you can try so you can get a little bit more comfortable with it. Uh, do note that they include some lessons on things that aren't necessarily super intuitive, like using H, J, K, and L to move around when Actually, the arrow keys I find much more uh, easy and comfortable to use. So you really don't necessarily have to use these special keys. And they also show you how to delete individual characters and things like that that are usually just easier to do by using insert mode, by just typing I. So many of their uh, lessons are a little easier to just accomplish push if you do it manually. Like here they tell you to use X to delete each key, but I would just go into insert mode and uh, do it that way. And that's just as fast, right? So anyway, you can do that and it's kind of fun. Uh, I did learn a lot by doing it. Another thing you can do is read the manuals that are at the end of that uh, Vim Tutor document. And you can also search Google and Stack Overflow, and you can check out YouTube for more tricks if you want like more advanced Vim tricks uh, to try out. But I think this should hopefully be a good start, especially for bioinformaticians who are not trying to necessarily be like the experts at editing files really quickly, but just are trying to get by and want a decent enough text editor. Um, that you can use when you're stuck on a remote server and you don't really have access to your normal favorite text editor. So let me know below in the comments if you found this useful. You can also subscribe to the channel. And this is a video that YouTube thinks you'll like. And this is a video that I think you'll like. I'll put something here based on this video.